UN tried to replace U.S. population under Obama, but then Trump stepped in. President Trump may have spared Western civilization and culture for a little while longer. WND reports, in the last year of his presidency, Barack Obama and his administration worked tirelessly with the United Nations to expand the definition of refugee to include economic migrants and drastically increase the numbers being resettled in the United States. And he found a willing partner in the Republican-controlled Congress, which funded not only more refugees, but provisions for record numbers of unaccompanied minor children, so-called UACs, showing up at the border from Central America. In the fall of 2016, Obama hosted a UN Leaders Summit on refugees in New York, where he and other world leaders use rhetoric strikingly similar to the concept of replacement migration, a UN plot to replace the population of a given country with migrants and refugees from the developing world, or should they say underdeveloped world? What, what do you mean developing world? WND recently reported on the scene revealed in a UN document prepared in, a, in the year 2000 entitled Replacement Migration, it is a solution to declining and aging populations. The report details the plunging birth rates across Western Europe, Russia, Japan, and the United States, and identifies a solution, mass migration from the third world into these aging and declining nations. No, it's because the Western worlds believe in raising, paying their own way for their children. That's why they choose not to give birth to five and t uh, six and eight children. The, migrate, the migrants have an abundant amount of children because they're looking for handouts. How they word things differently, right? The 17-year-old document makes the case for mass migration as necessary to replace the aging population of developed countries. Without the migration of populations from the developing world, it reasons uh, economies will suffer because of labor shortages and falling tax revenues. Yeah, but they're looking to take money, not give money. So it's all a ploy. Therefore, among the demographic variables, only international migration could be instrumental in addressing population decline and population aging in the short to medium term, the report concludes. Obama's stated goals before the leaders' summit last fall were to increase financing. Again, here, we're fin increase financing for, for global humanitarian appeals. Why don't they increase financing to the citizens who are paying for the financing of their own citizens, as well as double the number of re resettlement slots and use alternative, use alternative legal pathways, such as a student and family-based visas for refugees to enter the United States? Really? So we have to pay for our education, but yet let's allow people in so we can pay for theirs. Does this make any sense to you guys? The report by the influential Brookings Institute included reasons to support Obama's plan to increase resettlement, stating, for receiving countries, migration has already become the most important source of demographic growth and renewal for wealthy societies. This is the goal of replacement migration. The so-called benefits of replacing a country's population with third world migrants is bogus and imaginary, said Leo Homan, uh, author of a 2017 investigative book, Stealth Invasion, Muslim Conquest Through Immigration and Resettlement, Jihad. That's exactly right, Mr. Hoffman. Homan or whatever, said that while the cost of refugee resettlement are understated, often ignoring refugees' heavy use of public assistance programs such as food stamps and Medicaid, refugee advocates also like to overstate the economic impact of refugees in the workplace. H.E. Peter Thompson, president of the UN 
General Assembly made remarks at the 2016 summit that the UN's commitment towards migrants is not restricted to refugees but toward economic migrants as well, declaring that those migrants in search of opportunity and a better life for their children deserve the same rights as those fleeing armed conflict and the brutal effects of war. The UN included the economic rights of migrants in a major document for the first time with its Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. Really, that's what they're trying to push in California, too, the 20, Agenda 2030, too. I mean, have everybody live in a, in a roach cage, you know, stacked up one on top of the other. Uh, you know, I say shut down the UN. I mean, really, this is disgraceful. Deputy Secretary General Jan Ellison echoed that sentiment at the summit, saying that development programs are crucial and a key priority. The 2030 uh, Agenda, the Sustainable Development, recognized the contribution migration makes to economic progress. We must harness that positive energy. No, send them down to Syria and let the UN pay for them. That's all. The summit also produced the New York Declaration, a document signed by all UN member states that makes alarming promises to protect not only legitimate refugees fleeing war no zones, but migrants as a whole, even those who would not qualify as refugees under the Geneva Accords. For example, the New York Declaration includes a promise to protect the human rights of all refugees and migrants regardless of status, as well as a statement to strengthen the global governance of migration by bringing the International Organization for Migration into the UN system. Shut them down. The International Organization for Migration is a radically pro-migrant UN group and has declared emphatically that migration is both necessary and inevitable. The group was formally added into the UN system at the conclusion of the 2016 summit, which Obama featured in New York. The New York Declaration reveals a plan for the future, including a commitment to start negotiations leading to an international conference and the ad adoption of a global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration in 2018, Migration, like other areas of international relation, will be guided by a set of common principles and approaches. This is crazy. With the election of President Donald Trump, the United States has lowered refugee admissions from Obama's 2017 goal of 110,000 to just over 50,000, a move that drew intense criticism from pro-migrant groups and possible pushback from the U.S. State Department. This is not surprising given that the State Department under Obama was extremely pro-migrant as evidenced by its actions at the two U.N. migration summits and the department remained staffed predominantly with Obama holdovers. There is still many, many holdovers from the Obama administration, the State Department Ira Mecklen, Media Director for the Federation for American Immigration Reform or FAIR, told WND. Mecklen said Trump has left many top positions in the State Department unfilled and this is stifling the President's agenda. If you want to have your agenda carried out, you need people in place to carry it out. However, with the recent Supreme Court ruling on Trump's travel ban, it appears Trump has stopped the refugee flow to the United States, at least temporarily. His refugee cap to 50,000 was reached on July 12th, and with the travel ban in effect, refugees cannot be admitted until the next fiscal year, which begins October 1st, unless they can prove they have a bona fide family tie in America. The U.S. Supreme Court is expected to make a final ruling on Trump's travel ban in October. 
The latest travel ban ruling says he can limit the number of refugees entering the United States, but what will happen remains to be seen, Melham explains. So do you see why Obama wanted to appoint the, that's why they got rid of Scalise and they didn't want, Obama wanted to appoint his own uh, Supreme Court judge, but Trump won because Obama was hit with a lot of backlash and we got Gorsuch in. Had we not gotten Gorsuch in this country? Oh boy, if it's in bad shape now, you can just imagine what it would be like if Gorsuch wasn't in. Let us know what you think in the comments below, but this is criminal. Shut down the UN. We're not paying anymore for this criminal entity. Let them, let the, if they care, let them build, there's a lot of land overseas. Let them build things over there if they're, they love, no, they want to destroy, they want to destroy this country because this, this is the last country that's going to go down actually. Let us know what you think in the comments below and thank you so much for watching.